God for this series on healing the damaged emotions. It's one of the very important series, I would say. And I pray that our Lord himself will do the session of healing of damaged emotions. So let me start with a little story. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful woman in a beautiful garden. She was living with her husband and the garden owner gave everything to them. And he even loved them as their own father. One day, as that lady was walking in the garden, she saw a strange but handsome creature. The creature began to speak to her and started to say so many evil things about her owner. It challenged her thoughts and it told so many lies about the owner whom she loved the most. It said that the owner was holding out on her it is the owner is not honest and the woman listened and finally she became more curious and more angry and she felt betrayed, she felt ashamed and she felt rejected. Um, and so she tried to defend the owner but the creature's voice was so powerful and the accusations of the creature was powerful. It was so overwhelming and finally the young woman gave in. And she decided to rebel against the one whom she loved and did the very thing that he warned her not to do it at any cost. And then she had to leave the garden with her husband. That was the birth of shame, anger, and rebellion. Do you recognize the story? Yes, that was the story of the Garden of Eden. It took place in that beautiful garden of Eden and that beautiful woman was Eve and the stranger was Satan. That rebellion took place in a form of eating a forbidden fruit. But if you see the spirit behind it, she felt rejected. She felt shame that the owner was holding something and that root began to take form and she sinned and finally she disobeyed and she brought the same shame, rebellion, rejection on the whole uh, human race. All of us are trying our best not to eat such fruits, but somehow we will end up back into that rejection because we are not going to the root of the problem. Today, I'm going to speak to you about the root. If you ever had a sense of depression, or a sense of sadness, or disappointment, or anger, or a feeling of retaliation towards others. And uh, then today is the day God wants to reach out to you. Have you ever felt addicted to someone, addicted to something, and addicted to something which even it might be trivial, but addicted that you cannot take your thoughts away from it? So you try to pluck that fruit away from it, but it kept growing back. It kept growing back. And you again, you try to remove that. But at some point, when you look at something, it keeps coming back. Why? Might be you are dealing with the symptoms. You know, when COVID comes, it's the fever is a symptom. So we need to go to the root of the issue to remove the virus. We cannot only deal with the symptoms because it keeps coming back. You know, so somebody was telling about the apple stock, the root stock, the nutrients, water, grafting, everything depends on the fruit. So some, similarly, how in our younger days, we might have been rejected. We might have faced, faced shame. We might have faced injustice. Everything has been embedded in us and it has grown. Many people deal only with the symptoms. You go to anger management therapy, you have to do some mindfulness, some meditation. And, but you see constantly keeps coming back, it keeps coming back because there is something else at the root. Many, you have seen the fear coming back, the depression coming back, the addictions coming back. You know, one girl came and said that she has a damaged, spirit. When she was young, she was treated so badly and she became so rebellious and now she's a damaged soul. I looked at her and said, you're not damaged, you are a daughter of God. 
you know, God calls each and every one of us as a son and daughter. Many are into antidepressants. Many have trouble sleeping. So these are the reasons because something from the past is affecting the present and the fear about the future is also affecting the present. So now you see both sides. Something, whatever you have experienced in the past is affecting the present and something the future that fears of the future. How will I face? Even at one point, I was fearing about my future. And that's when these two get pressed in the present and you struggle. Why I cry often? I'm not sure, as one girl was telling. Often I just feel the pressure. This girl, second marriage, third marriage, everything she got into a loser. And that person troubled her like anything. And finally, when she came out, she was not even able to see a movie or to see a, um, uh, couples because she was able to remember the pain in her marriage. So many of the problems are related to the pain. And one more thing is so important why God wants to call himself as a father, you know. The reason is fatherlessness. Many don't, haven't enjoyed the real love of a father. The presence of a loving father makes life significantly better and the absence of a good father makes life very painful. Is your father a blessing or a curse in your life? Think about it. Could, that could have given a lot of pain. That's why in Malachi, we read in the fourth chapter, fifth and sixth verse, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. It's very, very important. See, when we, when we don't have the real father's love or the mother's love, or when someone keeps telling in our young age, you are so bad looking, you are so, not at all intelligent, you cannot study, you will fail, you, you are a loser, you cannot come up in life. And you're looking so bad, you're so fat. All those words keep coming again and again. Even at old age, one lady was, you know, she is 70 years old. And when somebody went to counsel her because she never comes out of her house. And she said at the age of 14, somebody raped her. And even her parents called at her that you might have done something wrong. And that brought her into a cocoon and she never came out. She never married and she stayed alone without talking to anyone. The repressed emotions are very bad. We are all emotional creatures. We are all born to express emotions freely and openly. We are, but we sometimes repress our emotions because we think that it is negative and we don't fit in, it's not there. So we live a phony life. So in many homes, children are not allowed to speak or express their emotions. They fail to express even when they get married. They fail because they learn to bury their pain deep inside. And when sometimes these emotions show up, they feel overwhelmed, inadequate, ashamed that they are a failure. So it's very important. This particular session, each and every one of us should pray and attend that many have built walls around them. Many have built on masks around them, put on masks, and they have buried their pain so deep inside that no one can see that. You know, one girl, she struggled because her mother didn't love her. But when she became a mother, all the old wounds opened up. And she said, I am I will not able to bear this pain because the truth is that we are holding on to our emotions. We pretend, we avoid, we deny those uncomfortable emotions. Those unresolved emotions get trapped in our body. And what happens, you know, they drain our energy. They lead to burnout, emotional imbalance, and eventually even disease. So some people even sin because of the emotions, the repressed emotions. And so we need this can express as a toxic emotions. And so we need to be healed. Many ask, okay, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my savior and Lord. And now what about it? I need to change. When pastor was calling uh, one of his church members, you accepted Jesus. Now, why are you angry? Why sometimes you just tell that I'm pain? No, I wanted to uh, tell each and every one of you, let us not judge others because 
they whatever pains they have gone through from their younger days we don't know and how it shows up see you know we are made of spirit soul and body right so when we accept jesus christ as our savior and lord we get a new spirit that is very true but what about our mind what about our emotions what about our will so unless we allow the spirit to seep inside our mind slowly slowly we get transformed so we are all in the process of sanctification salvation is different sanctification is different let us not confuse so if somebody accepts jesus christ as their lord and savior it takes him have you seen many ministers of god great preachers they are falling for sexual sins and even they don't have seen any love in their heart sometimes they just speak so judgmentally it's because they did not understood this concept many why they do they sin in sexual aspects because somewhere somewhere in their younger days they have uh, repressed emotion but i'm not going to justify sin you know holy spirit the seed of the holy spirit will not allow us to sin it sanctifies it us but it that sin and temptation lives with us so and god has gave it's like a fight you know there is a battlefield of the mind that's the famous book of joyce meyer that is a real battlefield we go through in the mind so that is why these negative emotions keep resurfacing regardless of the situation so sometimes history often repeats they are, they were abused at their childhood even they were abused at their marriage and later they were abused by their children <clears throat> history keeps repeating why because they are holding back they are grown up in that and they are living in that and they feel that is a normal situation so many stories across the world have confirmed that there's a realm of problems that require a special kind of prayer and a deeper level of healing by the holy spirit and that realm lies between our sin on the one hand and our sickness on the other and the bible calls that as infirmity so now let me just explain you what we are going to do in the healing sessions through my uh, powerpoint presentation which i have sent it across to all the groups see i am going to deal uh, this emotions one by one so today we are going to see how repressed feelings the past can impact the present and even the future uh, fears can impact the present so but we need not allow the past to dictate the future that's what i'm going to speak now till this time we studied how the past can impact the present now next 5 minutes we'll see how it will not dictate the future so this next uh, after two weeks we'll study about the spirit of rejection that is the worst enemy we have and then the victim mentality depression anxiety abuse addiction and finally how to trust and receive the love of god and others so this is going to be a series and let's all join you know this i have said that unprocessed emotions get trapped in our body leading to sin sickness toxicity and emotional imbalances bible clearly says in romans 11 16 if the root is holy so are the branches so what is the root the root is holy means the root is sanctified for christ the root is given totally made clean and holy by christ and then there the branches and the fruits will be very whole, very beautiful there will be no such pain so now if you see these are the three main roots we need to discuss injustice shame and rejection you know if you see all your emotions when girl was telling she lost her marriage there was a sense of injustice in her and the things that she faced in her marriage was shame and rejection she was telling that her husband uh, went to another beautiful lady and left her recently i met a girl and she said that um her husband left her and he gave all the money what she needs but money is not important at the event uh, after 10 years of marriage when someone leaves her for some other beautiful woman you feel rejected and finally if you keep all the emotions inside it so when you see some other people you feel the sadness and you might feel guilt might be i did something wrong in my marriage that he left me or panic attacks later or depression or abuse you if you are abused in the younger days you are prone to abuse others so these are the things 
had to be, these are all symptoms. So let us deal with the roots one by one each day. It's a very important topic. So today I wanted to show you, if you take a tree, it has rings, right? If you just cut a big redwood tree that grows much in the California area of US, you can see concentric rings and each ring will tell the story of that tree. The rings tell the forest fire, climatic change, storms, and so on. The scars, same manner. If you see our emotions, if you have the uh, binoculars or something to see your emotions, you can see the painful hurts from your younger days. Somebody may have told you that um, you are good for nothing. And all those things could have got deeply buried. So you should never think that salvation is a shortcut to emotional health. We should have allowed the Holy Spirit who can heal us with the special healing powers. We also need to understand that when somebody else uh, does some sin, let us, let us talk to them in a loving manner and bring them out of that sin instead of judging them in a very bad way. So Bible clearly says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I said that when we accept Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit comes to our spirit. He renews our spirit. But there is a second part that is our mind, our soul, with will, emotion. So who will do it? Holy Spirit's power slowly seeps into our mind. So then we will be transformed. So we should allow today, let us surrender everything to God. And let me ask you some few questions. If you have a diary, please write it down. All the seven or eight um, uh, episodes, we will sit and analyze what is that emotion that is like a thorn in my flesh? Which one I am struggling to the most? Which one um, I haven't taken to the cross? So this is very important if you need to deal with that one. So let me come uh, and explain you the last 10 minutes, how we can deal with that hurt. Today, we said that my past can affect my present, but I will not allow it to dictate my future. So how can we do that? So first I said that is a garden, a beautiful woman. And a, and a creature came and seduced that woman to rebel against her master. Now there is another garden. In that garden, Jesus Christ came to obey his father. He was crying out, Father, if it is your will, if it is your will, please, Lord, let me pray. Otherwise, you please take this take this cruel thing from me. He sees a cross in front of him. He sees a pain in front of him. All the emotional pains, all the sickness, all the damage is what we can see in this world was put on Jesus. He's seeing the cruel sin. He's seeing that rejection in front of him. He's not able to take his father's presence is leaving him in, on the cross for three hours. He could not bear. He was crying out, Father, Father, if it is your will, let this cup pass from me. And finally, father said, no, my son, you had to take it up. You had to take it up for my child to be healed. You need to take this up. That's why Bible says in Isaiah 54, 10, it pleased the Lord to crush his own son. So it pleased the Lord. So now let us look to the cross. That is own and only way. Today, I just want you to look to the cross and surrender everything that you have gone through. Maybe you will feel some, one lady was telling she's 70 years and she had lost everything. Now, what, what, what would I gain back? You know, God will walk with you. The Lord who created you will walk with you. He will hold your hand and he, he will never judge you like others have judged you. He knows your pain. He has been washing you through us. You are healed by the wounds of Jesus. So bring your hearts to him. Bring everything that you had gone through to him. Let us surrender at his feet. If you can mute uh, this meeting and you can cry out, you can cry out in your place. Cry out to God. Surrender to him. Let your tears flow because maybe you have experienced shame in your life. But I'm sure today that shame was taken up on the cross when Jesus was hanging naked on the cross. Why he allowed himself to be hanged naked on the cross? Because he took the shame. Corey Ten Boom has written a beautiful book and she said she and her sister were made naked when they were in the concentration camp and they were shamed. But when she came out, she was having so much anger. And when one day God 
looked at her and she said she gave all her shame to Jesus back because Jesus was hanging on the cross. He took every shame, every shame, every injustice. But somebody said that sinners at the hands of an angry God. But I would say, holy God at the hands of angry sinners. When Jesus was on the cross, it was like holy God at the hand of angry sinners. You know, are you hurt by someone? Might be, they might have said one word, but if that one person is the one whom you love most, that little word will hurt you more. Let us come, give it everything to Jesus. He wants us to live a joyful life. For a Christian, joy is central. Everything else is peripheral. Everything might have been lost, but Jesus is telling that I am your treasure. I'm the God of the whole universe. Today, I want you to keep two things in mind. The first one is your God has taken your shame, your pain, your sins on the cross. The second, he said, I am the God of all flesh. Is that anything difficult for me? He has taken it, everything on the cross and he has made so many beautiful galaxies and he is full of power. Nothing is difficult for him. Can you surrender? Can let us sing the song right now. And as we sing, let us cry out to him. Let us cry out to him. Let's cry out to him. Let's sing the song. As Hepzibah is singing the song, let us cry out. God, I surrender to you, Lord, every day. Yes, Jesus, we praise you and we worship you, God. Hallelujah, 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 Father. We praise you, Lord, we praise you. Come on, my dear friends, let's surrender our lives. We are all of carrying our past wounds and we have the fear of our future. But he is living, our God is alive and he is holding our future. He is holding our future. He is a hiding place. He is in our heart and he delivers us. So let's trust in him. Let's put all our trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Right now, Lord, I bring everyone, everyone, everyone to your hands, Father. Lord, Lord, I bring their emotions, Father. Right now, you are looking into their hurt, Father. You are looking into their emotions, Lord Jesus. We will trust in you, Lord, that you are powerful enough to handle that damage emotions, Father. Lord, I bring this brother into your hands, Father, Lord Jesus. Father, I am bringing him, Lord, full of rejection. His heart has gone to rejection after rejection, Father. Lord, let your power come upon, Lord Jesus. Let your power come upon him, Lord Jesus. Let your blood cover, Lord Jesus. Sabina, Lord Jesus. I bring each and every one here, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, heal that emotion. Heal the tears, Father. See, Lord, you are holding every tears in your hands, Father. Nothing is hidden before you, Lord Jesus. Nothing is hidden before you, Lord Jesus. The pains, the hurts, those words, Father. Those words, Lord Jesus. Those words cannot define their identity, Father. Those words can never de define their identity. Their identity is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we give you glory, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord. You are doing mighty things right now. Touch, touch, Father. Touch, Father. Let your name be touch them, Father. Let your power go through their spirit and their soul and even their body, Lord Jesus. Let there be a complete healing, Lord Jesus. Let there be a complete healing from the head to the toe, to every Free emotions, Lord Jesus. Lord, you have seen the tears that sister had gone through, Father. The rejection what she has felt. Lord, the one who is supposed to stand next to her and protect her has left her, Father. And Lord, you have been looking at her face her cries in the night. And Lord, you will never leave her just like that. You will do mighty things in her life. And Lord, you will bring her husband back to her, Lord Jesus. You will give her back what she has lost Jesus. And Father, Lord, I give you all the glory. 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 Lord Jesus, right now I'm crying out to you, Lord Jesus, for the shame, for the shame, for the sexual abuse, for the emotional abuse your children had gone through, Lord Jesus. They cannot even share with anyone, Lord Jesus. But you're looking at them. You're looking at them. They are now looking so beautiful in front of you, Lord Jesus, wearing the white dress. And Lord, you are coming, Lord. You are embracing them, Lord Jesus. Your hand is touching them, Lord Jesus. They are no more lonely, Lord Jesus. They are walking hand in hand with the heaven, with the God who made the heaven and earth, Lord Jesus. And they are walking with you, Lord Jesus. Nothing is difficult for you, Lord Jesus. You are the beloved Lord. And my beloved is mine. And I am my beloved. What a beautiful love you have for us, Lord Jesus. And Father, those who are suffering with no love in their house, with no love from anyone, Lord, Lord, let your love flow over their Damage emotion, Father. Lord, let the, your love touch your emotion, Father. Let your love heal them, Lord Jesus. No one can do, Lord Jesus. Only you can do, Father. Only you can do, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon that sister. Holy Spirit, come upon that brother. And today, mighty things should happen, Lord Jesus. Everything should turn upside down, Father. Whatever they have lost, they will get back in double measure. No more tears, no more pains. They will rise up as beautiful for you, Lord, for your glory. Lord, you will give them great sleep, Father. Lord, when they lie down, there is no sleep for them, Lord Jesus. Father, but you said, I will give my beloved sleep. Lord, you will today give them sleep, Lord Jesus. 
you will today give them beautiful sleep, Lord. Not only today, hereafter, Father, every emotions, every emotions God is healing right now. Right now, right now, surrender at his feet, surrender at his feet, surrender at his feet. Everything that you had gone through, every pain that you had gone through, every shame that you had gone through, every words that people spoke against you, Lord, please study that sister is crying, Lord. Lord, so much evil words have been spoken. And Lord, she has struggled, but now she has been looked as an evil person, Father. Lord, you are the one who can heal her, Lord Jesus. You are the only one who can heal her, Lord Jesus. No one can understand her, Father. But you will understand because you had gone through that pain of rejection. You had gone through the pain of shame. Right now, touch, Father. Touch, Lord. Heal, Lord Jesus. Nothing is difficult for you, Lord Jesus. You are the healer, God. Heal, heal, Lord Jesus. Heal, Lord Jesus. And if you have God healed, give him a great shout of glory and praise. And he is worthy of all our praise. He is worthy of all our honor. Let's surrender and praise him and thank him with a song. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Jesus, we take. We give this prayer into your hands. Amen. Please pray for a young girl. She is, plans to commit suicide. Uh, she has gone through rejection from her parents and also from her husband. Let's pray before the song. Says, she says, Father, I give those who are planning to commit suicide right now into your hands. How much pain they might have gone through, Lord, so that they'll feel that this life is worth no more. There is no use in this life. Lord, have mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Just a month back, I heard about a girl falling from the 12th floor down. Lord Jesus. Lord, so many people are right now going through the path of suicide, Father. Lord, you protected so many of us from that path. Lord, do it right now. Touch those girls. Touch those people who are trying to commit suicide. Let them hear your voice and stop them, Father. Let them know that there is great love from you, Lord Jesus. They can live their life because they have the Heavenly Father as the greatest treasure. Let the father and mother can forsake them. The whole world can forsake, but you will never forsake. Lord, I pray for those who are planning right now suicide, Father. Protect them. Protect them. Send your love to them right now. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Let's sing this song.
Yes. Let's surrender everything at his feet and cry out to him. Here I am, Lord, ready to serve you. Lord, with all my tears, with all my pains, I'm here fully surrendered at your feet. Whatever you want, you can do with my life because I know you are my father, you are my beloved and you will do the best for me. Just tell out, open your mouth and tell it to your God. Let him fill with that joy. I request Paul to pray for this. Lord, thank you for this wonderful evening you have given. And as we are praying now for the people, those who are in need of love, the Bible says very clearly, I who take care of you, I have carved you in my hands. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. You're always remembered. These are the words you have always said to the people, those who believe you, Lord, those who are, you have touched in their life. I pray all the children, those who are longing parents, let them receive the love of the Lord in their life. The Bible says very clearly, the Lord chooses a person and he takes care of him throughout his lifetime. He carries him in his hands and he never leaves him nor forsake him. Lord, we bow down before you and we submit every children, those who are undergoing all this kind of turbulence and emotional fear in their life. I pray, let the deliverance come into their life let them receive the blessing of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let them not worry. Let them spare the love to another, another. Because when you give, you receive more. This is the teaching of the Bible. When you give more, you will receive more. Let the children, those who are suffering from the emotions, let them receive the blessing to give, Lord. I pray the holy anointing rest upon each and everyone hearing these words and prayer. Those who are joining with me, let the holy anointing fell upon them as it descended upon the days of the Pentecost. Lord, they gathered together. They waited for you and you came with your presence. This day you have destined. So I pray, let them be renewed with the new spirit in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray and receive the blessing amen amen anyone can anyone has any questions or any prayer request you can unmute and tell if nothing is there i can ask pastor prabhakaran to finish with the benediction so thank you dear friends let's meet after two weeks uh, we will again uh, come back for dealing with rejection. Rejection is a worst feeling that is the root and let's do deal with that. I request all of you to come and we should pray for those. Sister Eva, good evening. I just happened to look through, look at your chat and then I saw this and I also invited two of my friends also into this group and they have also joined and I believe that it's it must be a blessing to them. Yes, let's pray because many people are struggling with emotions. Even I have my emotions damaged earlier. God healed us. So all of us are wounded healers. Yeah. I wanted to speak about wounded healers because those who are wounded more, God uses them more. That's what I believe. So each and every one of you are wounded healers. Thank you so much. Pastor, you can... Yes, we have not the high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And the Bible says, let's therefore come boldly through the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Yes, Lord, thank you. Shall we receive the benediction? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, sisters. Thank you, brothers. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You.